So I have a uh, catapult I made here, uh, and I'm going to go through the step-by-step -step directions of creating this. So you can see I've got a lot of different materials that I used. I got some uh, jumbo popsicle sticks. Uh, I got a plastic spoon, some binder clips, uh, a bunch of rubber bands, some clothespins, and, and then I actually have a uh, paper clip that I kind of bent. But in the end, I'm able to create a catapult that I'm able to launch using this little uh, bent paper clip so that if I go ahead and move it, it goes uh, and, and launches whatever you put in your uh, spoon. So let's get started with the directions for creating this project. So to get started with the materials that you'll need, um, you're going to need some rubber bands. You'll need a micro servo. Uh, for this one I just used a Tower Pro uh, SG90 is the uh, type of servo that I used. Uh, you'll also need an Arduino Uno that you'll use to control that servo. Uh, you'll need a breadboard with some wires to uh, attach your servo to your Uno, uh, a potentiometer to control that servo. Uh, you're going to need a pair of needle nose pliers. You'll need a paper clip or two in case you mess up, but you'll need a few paper clips. Uh, you'll also need some binder clips. I just picked these up at Walmart, but uh, these are the bigger uh, size binder clips to use uh, in the construction of this catapult and then you also need um, some jumbo craft stick or uh, like a tongue depressor but uh, those would be the materials that you need to get started on building this catapult. Alright so the first piece that we're going to make is we're actually going to make this uh, bottom brace down here at the very bottom uh, along with these two uh, supports for our catapult. So what I've done is I've taken three popsicle sticks and I've stacked them on top of each other. Uh, just to give some support uh, for this catapult. And then we're going to actually use some rubber bands and we're going to use the rubber bands to connect these additional popsicle sticks to this uh, cross beam here. The one thing is that you want to leave some excess over here on the edge that'll allow you to rubber band uh, this a little bit better. Another thing to point out is when you're going to rubber band this, if you just were to rubber band around this repeatedly, going this direction, only around these two pieces. What it does is it ends up pulling our uh, little popsicle stick here in towards the middle, and that's not what we want. We want it to have it uh, be uh, as square as possible. So one trick to do this would be to uh, do two times coming from the middle out to the edge, and you can twist it, and then you can go ahead and come back around again. And so that would be the initial, and you can see it's wanting to pull that uh, cross beam out. So now what I'm able to do is then I'm able to go ahead and wrap it around just these two outer pieces, which after I've got it, you can see now that that has uh, stayed pretty much at a right angle here, which is that's what we want. So uh, I'll go ahead and do this second piece to match, and then we'll move on to the next step from there. All right, now that we have the uh, front structure of our uh, catapult, uh, when you do add these three popsicle sticks, uh, you want those to be on top of your uh, two perpendicular uh, supports here. Um, instead of being underneath, we want those to actually be on the top. The next step is just to take two clothespins. These are gonna be some vertical supports. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna attach those to our three popsicle sticks um, and then once you have them uh, those three popsicle sticks should fit nicely into the grooves that are already in those uh, clothespins so uh, we've got those added um, and now I can go ahead and uh, we're gonna go ahead and add the cross beam at the top and for that I'm gonna use three popsicle sticks again um, and with this this can be a little bit tricky but you're gonna end up putting these in between and going across so once you have them in there those three popsicle sticks you can slide it all the way down so that it's resting on that spring that's in the middle um, but when you're done you should have your clothespins holding up your vertical uh, support here, uh, that little cross beam that's going to go, um, that your catapult is going to uh, collide with to launch the object. 
So the next step now is uh, to add some supports from our cross beam that is sandwiched between our clothespins. So we're going to actually make those. You can see here we're going to go from uh, that diagonal uh, down to the bottom here. Uh, with this, what I found to be easiest because what we're going to end up needing to do is we're going to need to put two of them here. But I also need some cross support back here. And to do that, we're going to take three of them, just like we did in the front. And we're going to add those three back here at the bottom. And then you're going to need these two supports to support the, uh, the launching point. And the reason is if I pull back on this, what happens is this whole thing is going to snap backwards. So I need some supports here to keep this from coming back towards the back. Um, I found the easiest is to rubber band the top part first before you try to rubber band um, the bottom piece. So I'll go ahead and uh, rubber band that up and then we'll get on to the next step. So you can see now that we have our uh, structure in place, most of the framework uh, is set up to where now we're going to need to add um, some binder clips to this. So up at the front, at the very bottom where we have three. Uh, popsicle sticks stacked on top of each other. I'm going to take a rubber band um, and with this rubber band I'm going to actually put it inside of our binder clip um, and then I'm actually going to clip the binder clip here with the uh, little uh, pincher deals for lack of better words. Uh, these two silver pieces we'll go ahead and put out towards the front so we'll go ahead and clip that on um, and then what we want to also do is we want to flip those two silver pieces underneath. Um, and now what I have, you see here, I have both of those in the middle. Um, this rubber band itself is actually going to come up over the top. And it's going to be used to go around a spoon. So the spoon is actually going to go in here. But the problem is that I need to mount this spoon to one of these silver pieces first. So to do that, what I ended up doing is I took a rubber band um, and just on this top silver clip, I just set this spoon on top of it and then I went ahead and used a rubber band um, and wrapped around it multiple times to attach it to the silver clip. So I'll go ahead and do that and then we'll move on to the next step. Now that we have our spoon attached, and again, we just use some rubber bands to connect it there to that part of the binder clip itself. Um, however, that doesn't necessarily always make the spoon uh, want to stay in this starting position at the top. You know, I let go and it falls down. So what I need is I need something attached to our spoon to cause tension to go back up towards this cross beam, uh, which will in turn let us launch an object. So earlier we added in this rubber band to this binder clip and what it's going to do is we're actually going to pull it up and over this cross beam. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll pull it up and over. And what I can do if it's easiest, you can see if I put the rubber band there, when I pull it down, that rubber band is going to continue to slide down towards the bottom. I want that rubber band to stay up here towards the top. So to do that, what I can do is I can take and I can loop this over. You can see it's up towards the top now to where now if I pull it it's going to stay up at the top and if I want to make this a little bit tighter I can take one side at a time and go ahead and I can wrap that around so that I have more tension on it but again if I pull it from the top again you can see that that rubber band now stays so again we use the rubber band through this binder clip up and over our cross beam and it is now attached to our top of our spoon nice and tight to where that's not going to slip down um, and again if I was to pull this down towards the bottom uh, it'll have lots of tension to where if I let go it'll go ahead and fire. So now that we have our spoon attached with some tension we're going to flip this around and down at the very bottom what I want to do is I want to take another binder clip um, and what I want is I want the clips this time to face 
out. Okay, so what I mean by that is the pinching part, we're gonna go ahead and pinch onto this bottom piece, and I'm gonna go ahead and flip those two metal pieces out to the outside. So if I was to turn this around, you can see that this piece right here is what we're going to use to provide an anchor as we uh, attach our spoon to this metal clip. And I'll show you how we'll do that, but that'll end up being kind of the little pin that we'll connect it to uh, to fire our uh, catapult. So this might be the trickier part of this build is to actually provide some kind of a hook to control this spoon and hold it in the launching position before it's actually fired. To do that, I'm gonna use a paper clip. Um, and what I'm gonna do to start is I'll go ahead and stretch this out straight. So I have this now where I have a bigger loop and then a smaller loop. The smaller loop is actually going to hook onto our binder clip here. And the rest of this is going to wrap around the very tip of our spoon. Um, so this is where it gets a little tricky and it's gonna take some time playing around with it. I'll use some needle nose pliers to bend our paper clip in the loop. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that and I'll show you what I come up with. So after you've uh, bent your paper clip around with the needle nose, it's gonna take some time getting it just right because when you get it over the tip of your spoon, um, you want it to just barely be grabbing it. And the reason is that when you attach your servo here in a second to this location, the servo arm is going to actually push this forward, which in turn will take and push this paper clip off of our spoon, causing the spoon to actually launch. So you can see what I did is I actually took and uh, squeezed this uh, paper clip around our binder clip hook. Um, I kind of created a letter U with it, which will hook over our spoon. And then another part of the paper clip is kind of a long um, firing trigger that will be pushed by the uh, micro servo. So you can see here again, it's barely on the spoon. There's a little bit of it there. Um, and then the other long piece is coming down towards this uh, cross beam at the back and again the micro servo will attach to this location and the arm again will push forward on this in turn launching our spoon. Now that we have our firing mechanism there we need to add our servo that will actually trigger our firing mechanism so to do that I'm just going to put some hot glue onto the bottom of this micro servo and attach it to this cross beam. So we'll go ahead and let that micro servo dry there. And in the meantime, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start getting um, our servo wired up to our uno and breadboard and uh, get the code if you're looking for the code to control this servo using a potentiometer uh, if you look in the description i have a link there to where you can go grab that code uh, and add it to your own arduino uno so once you've got your uh, circuit hooked up with your uno uh, that i have back here uh, and then also I have it wired into the uh, micro servo. And then I also have a potentiometer here that will control the direction that this is rotating. So the one thing I need to add yet is a uh, little um, bar here. I'll go ahead and put it on to where now, move it over so you can see it. This bar will go ahead and uh, move as I move my potentiometer which in turn if I keep moving it will launch our catapult and then again I can go ahead and reload move the arm back to the bottom I can go ahead and connect my spoon again go ahead 
ahead and connect our spoon here. You can see the part of the paper clip that is in front of our little uh, launching mechanism. Again, I can go ahead and move my micro servo to launch our catapult. So that is how I built this uh, catapult powered by an Arduino Uno. Uh, and again, if you're looking for the code and the schematics for this layout, uh, there is a, a link in the description to the code and the schematic.